What up, guys? Clip Beast, no script, off the rip. Part two. No long drawn out introductions. Just do me a favor. Go to Ricky Gervais's original channel. Throw him a like. Go subscribe. I already like this video uh, from Bounty Killer. Show love. Let's go. Part two. Part one will be in the description down below. Fun and educational. I am trying to educate myself more. I've reached that age where I need knowledge. I feel guilty about not knowing enough. You know, I had a good education, but I didn't make the most of it, I think. And, um,. I've even stopped watching trash TV. Now, when I'm at home, I watch hours and hours of Discovery Channel and History Channel. Hours, Discovery Channel, History Channel. Ask me anything about sharks and Nazis. Um, <laughs> round of applause there for... There's That's funny too, because as you do get older, you do start, like, I don't know, when I was a kid, I had, like, no interest. Well, I guess it's different for everybody, but as I got older, I wanted to learn more and more about the world. I don't know. Something weird, maybe. I don't know. They're not, they're, not, they're not as bad as a lot of people make out. Um, sharks, I mean. <laughs> Nazis, <laughs> awful. Right. Sharks, brilliant. Amazing creature. Okay. It can hone in on a floundering fish, right? Through the vibrations that it picks up through electrical impulses, through sensors in its flank. It doesn't need its eyes, but contrary to popular belief, their eyes are very good, okay? But it can smell and taste the slightest human secretion of blood and sweat, one part in a billion from a mile away. A shark would have found Anne Frank like that. <laughs> Nazis, rubbish. <laughs> I've been to her house, it's tiny. <laughs> Every day they went in. Okay, let's move on. Sarge. Dude, that setup was disgusting. <laughs> Every day they went in. Okay, let's move on. Sarge, can we look upstairs today? <laughs> no, there's no one down here. Move on. Sarge, what's that tapping? <laughs> she had time to write a book, for Christ's sake. <laughs> well, it ends a bit abruptly. No sequel. Lazy. No. But, <laughs> oh, it's messed up. Not a traditional subject for comedy, the old Holocaust. <laughs> but I will say something about the Holocaust. And That's all I had to say was the H word. <laughs> My video is going under review. It's great. Wonderful. But I mean, he's, tell he's spitting facts here. He was just comparing a shark to what happened with the Nazis. <laughs> but I will say something about the Holocaust. And... I'm sticking my neck out here, but in my opinion, I blame Adolf Hitler. Uh, he was the ringleader. Old Adolf. That name's died out, hasn't it? <laughs> he killed that dead, didn't he? <laughs> no one's calling their kid Adolf nowadays. No little Adolfs going to school. Loads of Brads and Angelinas, but no... Look, you don't hear the teacher doing the register. Brad here, Angelina here, Adolf here. Uh, <laughs> I've seen that on another bit somewhere. He like moves his hair down so quick. How do you do that so quickly? Yeah, Angelina here, Adolf here. Uh, <laughs> I do that quick so no one can take a picture of me doing that. Um, <laughs> no, but people make excuses for him. People say, uh, uh, oh, he was stupid, he was easily led. He didn't, he didn't mean that. What do you mean he didn't mean that? They say, oh no, he was influenced by the political philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, right? Because Nietzsche wrote this uh, paper um, talking about a, a superman. He, he said, not all men are born equal. And Hitler misinterpreted this and went way too far with it. And uh, <laughs> think of that. You're a great scholar, you've done this work, and you get a call from the Fuhrer. And the Fuhrer goes, all right, Nietzsche. Yes. Yeah, good. What do you want? He goes, just read your book. What do you think? Love it. <laughs> Love all that. Man and Superman. Not everyone's equal. Kill all the Jews. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> not everyone's equal, so kill all the Jews. I didn't write that. <laughs> I read between the lines. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean that. That's terrible. If you... You haven't, been killing, you, haven't, you haven't been killing Jewish people, have you? What? <laughs> this is why his writing so great along with his acting. <laughs> so done so well. 
Have you been killing Jewish people? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A few. How many? <coughs> Six million. Six million? That's what I won't do anymore. Leave it. <sighs> Leave it at six. That's terrible. I won't so do anymore. Wrong, man. Stay for dinner? Well, I will, but be careful in future. <laughs> I will. Are you writing any other books? Well, I am, but I'm scared to tell you about it. <laughs> I won't do anything. What's your new book called? My new book is called The Gypsies. Do we need them, Mum? <laughs> Cheers. No, don't applaud that. We shouldn't, we shouldn't talk about such things. It's not like we're in peace times now, is it? There's a, a little thing going on in a country called Iraq, which is not my favourite war. Isn't that crazy? This is 2008 talking about Iraq and like, look where we're at right now in 2023. It's like it's never-ending bullshit. My favourite war is... Um, oh, so many. Um... They got uh, good for different reasons. Uh, ah, la, 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 la. Um, oh, uh, uh, Falklands. That's probably the Falklands because um, we won that one, and uh, it was great. It was against uh, Argentina. Yeah, weird. Um, we're going to war with Argentina. All right, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I'm not familiar. I apologise. <laughs> The reason it's my uh, favourite war is that it, it was a range war. And what that means is the Argentine guns could fire nine kilometres. The British guns could fire 17 kilometres. So we just parked our ships <laughs> 10 kilometres away. And theirs were falling into the sea. And we were shelling the shit out of them. <laughs> it's the war equivalent of holding a midget at arm's length. And he's flailing, and you're just kicking him in the bollocks like that. <laughs> oh, my video is getting flagged. <laughs> Vietnam, best soundtrack. <laughs> Second World War, best ending. That had to be the end. That was a great finale. You couldn't follow that, could you? People are worried about that. They go, oh, atomic energy. Oh, it's bad. The effects are still being felt today, but. Oh, it ended a war, and that's good. And it was discovered by Einstein, and he's a genius. And in his 1903 paper, he said that light could be described as discrete bundles of energies that when irradiated onto an unstable... Ma what maniac thinks like that, really? I'm not a doctor, but I think that's what turns Stephen Hawking's mad, too much thinking, do you know what I mean? The universe is expanding. Of course it is, Stephen, yeah, of course it is, yeah. <laughs> Take a day off, go for a walk, not a walk, but I mean, just, no. Oh, <laughs> open the window. Watch a bit of TV, Robot Wars is on, you love that, don't you? Not Robot Wars. He said go for a walk, I don't know for a walk, open the window, Robot Wars. Dude, that's so wrong, man. The window, watch a bit of TV, Robot Wars is on, you love that, don't you? Greatest mind on if you don't know who these people are, you have to do some googling, please. <laughs> on the planet, <laughs> people say, Oh, we should never go at Stephen Hawking. Oh, he's a genius. He's not a genius, he's pretentious. <laughs> Born in Oxford and talks with that fake American accent. <laughs> <laughs> he is actually a hero of mine. Um, not my greatest hero. My greatest hero is Nelson Mandela. Um, what a man, isn't he? He's an incredible man. Um, incarcerated for 25 years. He was released in 1990. He's been out about 18 years now. And he hasn't re-offended. <laughs> I think he's going straight. Which shows you prison does work. I learned a lot last year about one of your great American heroes, uh, Rosa Parks. It was the 200-year uh, celebration of the abolition of slavery in Britain last year. We were a bit ahead of you on that. <laughs> but well done. Um, well done.
But the abolition of slavery wasn't the end of racism. Racism was still inherent in society as late as the 50s and 60s in England and America. And it was this one incident that sparked off the civil rights movement. Uh, a young black woman called Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a white person on a bus. It was the law, but she'd had enough. And she was arrested for that. But then that law was changed. But she didn't stop there. She started sitting in those seats meant for disabled people. <laughs> <laughs> she talked to the driver when the bus was in motion. <laughs> Did she have the correct change ready? Did she bollocks? <laughs> oh, some people. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I'm good. not a political comedian. <laughs> I like how he just said I'm not a political comedian because he's just joking at the end. He's he's just razzing at the end right there. He, obviously, it didn't happen. I used to be quite political growing up. That 15, 16 year old becoming aware and wow, well, you you did it to annoy your parents, obviously. But um, I think we're inundated with politics from an early age. I think everything is charged with politics and morality and the way to live. Um, uh, it's in everything, fables, nursery rhymes, little sayings. Um, I remember, I must have been as young as six, when we used to have an assembly at school, an infant school, and we'd all come in every Monday and sit down on the floor, cross-legged, and our deputy headmaster used to come up and tell us a story. And it always had a moral that we were meant to think about, and this would make us into leaders of men, character building. And he used to take ages over it. And he loved it, it was his best day, you know. And uh, I remember he told us about the two mice. The lazy mouse and the industrious mouse. And it was summer, and these two little mice were out in the woods. The sun was out, the streams were babbling, there was flowers, there were berries. There were nuts, there was, oh, and Lazy Mouse, he'd just be running around in the sun, having a bite from a berry, throwing the rest away. There was loads, it was never going to run out. <laughs> Industrious Mouse, he'd have a berry, sure, but he'd eat it all, and he'd put one away for a colder season, he knew. Lazy Mouse, he would, he'd be fucking running about sunbathing, <laughs> eating that, chewing that, throwing the rest away. Industrious Mouse went, oh, be careful, Lazy Mouse, because come winter, oh, fuck off, you square. <laughs> <laughs> That's people. Some people. The fall comes, same sort of pattern. The last of the berries, he's chewing there, throwing the rest away, he's just like chilling out, he's kicking through the leaves. You can't see him, he's... If you saw the leaves moving, yeah. <laughs> he'd be under the leaves, basically. You'd go, what's that? It's Lazy Mouse underneath the leaves. <laughs> if you could go under there, like the Discovery Channel, <laughs> you'd see Lazy Mouse going, fuck it. <laughs> Industrious Mouse, he'd be putting freeze-drying loads of berries, he'd be chopping wood and that he he made, he made an axe to chop the wood here <laughs> out of a little twig and a sliver of flint which he tied on with a horse hair <laughs> thus enabling him to chop and stockpile fuel so <laughs> no sense. that's a writer's mind right there winter comes different pattern the ground's hard there's nothing, there's no fruit, there's no berries, there's no nuts, there's nothing at all on those trees. And he can't find anything and he's, he's starving. And he's freezing and he's losing his body weight. And of course, industrious mouse, now he's in his cottage that he built. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. Roaring log fire. <laughs> just about. sitting there, rocking. On a pebble. <laughs> Knock at the door. Who's that? Obvious, isn't it? <laughs> so he goes over to the door. He opens the door. It's Lazy Mouse. And he goes, What do you want? He goes, I'm cold and I'm hungry. I can't find any food and I think I'm going to die. And he goes, Well, I did warn you, didn't I? 
He goes, yeah. He goes, never mind. Come in here and share with me. Where's the moral there? Mm. Fuck around, do what you want, and then scrounge off a do-good. That's a terrible moral for children, isn't it? <laughs> Awful. He told us the one about the boy who cried wolf. Have you heard that? Oh, well, I'm going to tell you again. <laughs> well, boy, so, yeah. in the Bible, I don't know. He's... <laughs> I haven't got a specific year, have I? Right. Boy, looking after the, the sheep for the villagers. That's his job. Look after those sheep, boy. You go, all right, yeah. But he gets a bit bored. Probably gets a bit sleepy if he's counting them. Right. And he thinks, oh, I'll have a laugh here. Get it a little sleepy if he starts counting them, counting sheep. That was pretty sneaky. I love the writing. Boy, you go, all right, yeah. But he gets a bit bored. Probably gets a bit sleepy if he's counting them. Right. And he thinks, oh, I'll have a that flew over some heads. It flew over mine for a second. A laugh here. He goes, Wolf! Wolf! And the villagers come up and they go, Where's the wolf? He goes, There's no wolf. They go, Oh, you can't. <laughs> so next day, he gets bored again. He thinks, That worked a treat. He's got very little imagination. He goes, I'll do that again. Okay. <laughs> so he goes, Wolf! Wolf! Where's the wolf? There's no wolf. Oh, you can't. <laughs> so the next day, he's sitting there, there really is a wolf. And the wolf comes up and he goes, wolf, 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 wolf. But the villagers don't come and the wolf eats all the sheep. And we were told the moral of that is never tell a lie. No, it isn't. <laughs> the moral of that is never tell the same lie twice. A terrible moral for children. <laughs> Nursery rhymes. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pile of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, which I later learned meant his cranium. <laughs> I thought his hat fell off. <laughs> and Jill came tumbling after. And that's a true fable of 16th century lovers who used to go up to the, the well behind the prying eyes of the villagers and their spouses and have it away. And what's the moral there, though? Don't fuck around with sluts or you get your head caved in. <laughs> How is that applicable to five-year-olds? <laughs> I have never worked out the moral to Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. All I can think is, don't sit on a wall if you're an egg. <laughs> but, I'm having flashbacks to my childhood. Again, how is that applicable to a five-year-old human? I mean, human. you tell that to a group of five, oh, so don't sit on a wall if you're an egg. Oh, what do you mean if I'm an egg? I'm not an egg. Oh, it doesn't make sense. If I'm an egg, none of us are eggs. If there was an egg there, it wouldn't make sense. Can you go to the egg? Don't sit on a wall. You go, I'm an egg. I can't eat. I've got nothing. I've got no ears, no eyes. I don't know what the fuck. What? Don't sit on a wall. I can't fucking hear. I don't. I don't. I've got nothing. This is. I'm in nothingness. I can't fucking climb walls for a start. So. It sounds like something that somebody came up with to like scare the children about sitting up on something way too high is what it reminds me of. Is that you're not you're gonna fall and you're gonna break everything. That's what it reminds me of, but I see what he's saying. Don't send horses to perform medical procedures. <laughs> <laughs> all the horses and all the king's men. But they rode up on horses, obviously, at that time. Of course they couldn't put him together again. They've got no dexterity whatsoever. <laughs> they can't sew to save their life. They're, they've got no thumbs, let alone opposable thumbs. They, don't send, send a horse, a delicate, an egg. We've got a cracked egg. Should we send a horse? Definitely not. <laughs> Have you got a doctor or someone who works for Fabergé? Don't. Fabergé <laughs> eggs. We've, 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 we've got like a half a ton creature with no fingers. Don't. <laughs> Don't send that. 
got a four-legged thing, we'd like, like no, no, no chance. They, they, they can't, they put, couldn't put on, glo- they couldn't scrub up. They can't. <laughs> Magic, there's an egg, delicate egg. Horse comes over, fucked. <laughs> He, he couldn't, they wouldn't even think of fucked. That's it. One step. They wouldn't even see it. They'd go over there, what? Fucked. That's it. <laughs> wouldn't even, you couldn't explain it to it. Don't send. It's ridiculous. If I had to design the perfect egg crushing device, it would be a hoof. <laughs> I need this, uh, as a cracked egg, I need it crushing completely. Hoof. The hoof's great. D- don't send a horse. Doesn't matter whether they're the king's horses or not. Don't s- certainly don't send all of them. <laughs> These horses are not the chaos. <laughs> if there was one horse with a little bit of nails, he had a ch- he did like one year before he got kicked out of Harvard. He could have, I know the rudimentary stuff. <laughs> like, they all the fuck it off oh, for fuck's sake. Don't, there's no lads. Don't ah, oh, they're fucking all over it. <laughs> fucked. He's definitely fucked now. <laughs> what if we'd have been invaded by France that day? And there, all, bloke comes running up the hill and goes, Are you in charge of all the king's horses? All the king's men? Yep. French are coming. What? The French are coming. Where are all the king's horses? I set them to mend an egg. You don't be gun. What do you mean you set them to mend a fucking egg? <sighs> oh. If your surname is Dumpty, don't call your firstborn Humpty. <laughs> what sort of a stigma is that? For a kid that's already an egg? And have the piss ripped out of him. I bet he jumped off the wall. But you were... Uh, I don't think you learn things from that. I don't think you learn things like that sneaky way through things like that, teachers and parents. I think your formative years are your peers. That's what you want to be like when you're in adolescence. You want to be like, you know, the cool boy or the older boy. And luckily I went to a school where all the other boys were idiots. (laughs) And one in particular was amazing. He was called David Beasley, and I don't know the politically correct term, he was a fucking moron. <laughs> I actually based Gareth from The Office on him, and that's true. So you can imagine, yeah, exactly. Oh, very sure. Much like that. Thank you. Um, and we were about 14. He just said something, though, and I talk about this all the time in music. Um, I'll, when I'm explaining something from a writer's perspective, I'll say they, they drew that inspiration from something. And people will always be like, oh, no, that's not, that's, not, that's, not how it's, that's not how it works. And I'm like, listen, trust me. And he even just said, like, look, a character from his hit TV show, he based off of a kid in high school. You know, so that's what writers do. That's where they get these ideas from. Experiences or people or things. Very much like that. Thank you. Um, and we were about 14, okay? And this is the sort of thing you used to come up with. You used to believe anything that was idiotic, okay? With confidence, apocryphal tales, just things he'd heard. Right, right, okay, so. He came in once, we were about 14, and he said, right, it's amazing, right? When you get captured by cannibals, big problem in Reading, where I come from. (laughs) He said, when you get captured by cannibals, they show you pornographic pictures so you get an erection and there's more meat to go around. <laughs> that would work, wouldn't it? <laughs> what? There they are. Cooking you in the pot. You're boiling, screaming, going, please don't kill me. They go, look at that, go. <laughs> <laughs> when he was about 15, 16, he went on holiday with his parents and he put a crab in a pint of beer because I told him, as a joke, that when a crab is drunk, it can walk forwards. <laughs> the crab, of course, drowned, right? And he came back on holiday and went, you're talking shit, Gervais. It's like, no shit. Unbelievable. He, uh, this is what he confessed to us once. 
I remember we were in biology class, and it was before the lesson, and he came in, and he went, oh, I've got to tell you this, right? He didn't. When you hear the story, you realise he didn't have to tell us this. <laughs> he said, I was masturbating last night. Hmm. Go on. <laughs> he said, I was up in my room, and he said, I was naked, with my eyes shut, with headphones on, listening to music, as you do. No. Sting. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, don't know why I, said that. I don't know why I said that. I, I've never masturbated to Sting in my life. Let's nip that one in the bud. <laughs> do you sting? <laughs> so he's there, naked, eyes shut, listening to music. He said, I finished. He said, and when I opened my eyes, my mum had been in and left me some tea and biscuits. <laughs> now, he didn't have to tell us that, did he? <laughs> Why would he tell me that? <laughs> but let's think of that scenario. Let's think <laughs> I don't even want to think of the scenario at all. Think of the mother. That's what I was going to say. How could you just sit down, casually lay down the biscuits and tea? So the mother goes up the stairs with a tray, because he loves his tea and biscuits. Uh, David! Oh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, dear. There's my firstborn. Whacking away like a little monkey. Well, I could just leave and he'd never know I was here. Or... <laughs> I could put these by his bed and he'd know his mum saw him coming all over himself. <laughs> Think of that, your mother walking in on you masturbating. The other way round's worse. <laughs> 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 Why are you trying to do to me here, Ricky? <laughs> oh, Mum, shut the door. <laughs> Mum, give me my CD back, it's Sting. <laughs> oh. He told us a very funny story that didn't involve him, actually. Um, it was true, because it made the local paper. It was about this guy. We were about 14, 15, so this was like amazing news to us. And this other guy was an older boy, I think he was like 17. And it was a bit of a scandal, because he got prosecuted for lewd behaviour. And what this bloke did, he went down to the, the public toilets, and he found one of those dodgy toilets and he sat there, you know, the, the hole in the cubicle, right? The glory hole, they're called. I don't know who invented them. I don't know who thought, hold on, I love cocks, I hate faces, I'm going to pop a little hole <laughs> just there, wait long enough, a cock will come through, and it did! <laughs> How these things get around? <laughs> who invents them? Who does that? And then thinks that would take off. And then, did someone just go in and sleep one day, just for having a piss, and then, oh, there's a little hole there. <laughs> Probably by my cock, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so he went down to his public toilet, okay, sat there for hours, okay, waited by the hole, people in and out. Eventually, someone comes in, rustles around, a cock comes through, ooh. <laughs> he sucked him off. What do you think he was going to do? <laughs> He's only there for one thing. <laughs> Oh, play a little tune on it. No, he's going <laughs> to put a bolt through it and leave. <laughs> a hat pin, now you're fucked. Right. <laughs> yeah. So he sucked him off, and when they went outside, it was his dad. What? How did the show go from this to this? I've had that in my head for 30 years. Now you live with it. You asshole. <laughs> oh. All the toothpaste in the world. Take the teeth out, dentist. Take the, take the gums out as well. Which one of them blabbed that around town, then? That bloke with a... Hi, honey, I'm home. Good day, dear. Yeah, I saw Toby. <laughs> How was he? He was all right. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you one um, story before I go. Uh, 
It is toilet related. Yeah. Fuck it, we're just gonna ride this one out. We got 12 minutes left. It's gonna be a longer video, but I'll just wait the extra three hours to upload it for 10 minutes. When I um, first moved in with my girlfriend 20 odd years ago, our first apartment together was a horrible little place in the worst area in London called King's Cross. Oh, horrible. It was a red light district and it was a seedy place, but it's all we could afford. Red light district sounds like a great place. <laughs> and it was one room, okay, but it had like a little kitchenette area. So for our own sort of sanity, we moved the little single bed into the kitchen bit. So it was like a one bedroom apartment. So anyway, so at night, we're in a room this big, okay? The bed literally just fit in. I had to push it down the wall to get it in. And it came over the doorway about six inches. And in bed, I could open the fridge door. The fridge was there, the cooker was there, and the sink was there. There was no toilet. The toilet was a shared toilet with all the other apartments in the block, and it was two floors down. So what wins in the middle of the night when I need a wee? Putting on trousers and going outside, or just pop into the sink. <laughs> that one. And I remember Jane, 20 odd years ago, in a sleepy state, saying, Oh, at least take the dishes out first. <laughs> I didn't. I used to get hold of the bottom plate, lift them all up, and we straight down the plug hole. Thank you very much. You've been fantastic. Cheers. Thank you. He's come back out for an encore. There's 12 minutes left. in other professions, do you? If you're a builder, you do a great job, and you go, cheers, you go, come back, go, what? Come back, oh, all right. Oh, <laughs> it's a good job I left a bit. <laughs> I was talking earlier about um, trying to educate myself, and that is true, and I think, you know, um, the internet is probably the greatest resource of information the world has ever seen. It's amazing. And it's crazy, he's talking about this in 2008, and look at where we're at now. Everyone's watching on their device. Look where things are headed. And uh, online encyclopedias that you can go into and change. <laughs> you can't do that in a library, can you, really? You can't. You know, it used to be funny. It's like I remember being a kid and being like, oh, like someone would tell you a fact, and you'd almost have to believe it. There's no way to search it, or you go ask around, you'd ask people, and they'd be like, oh, I, I don't know. And then, you know, <laughs> you got now is now nowadays somebody tells you something in school. Like, as a kid, you'd be like, Oh, yeah? Well, the strongest person in the world could lift 30,000 pounds. And you'd be like, damn, fucking 30,000 pounds. That's like 30 cars. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just making something up. Like, that doesn't even make sense. But you just go along with it because you couldn't search it. But nowadays, you could just, 30,000 pounds? That kid's full of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's different now, man. Just get down inside the PD. What are you doing, mate? Just changing a bit. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> It's loads of websites just clogging up the internet by people that are doing websites about themselves. It's like, my name is Rupert, this is my cat, I like the cure. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> and the trivia sites where just people just load up things they've learned. And I just think, what, do they wake up in a cold sweat and go, I've got to tell the world this, the peanut is not a nut, it's a legume. <laughs> <laughs> But my favorite, my favorite. Uh, Hold on, I'm sorry. Is he improvising with like notes? So I know a lot of comedians, what they do is they'll go around and they'll test out material before they ever get on a big stage. Like they'll play, they'll, they'll go to like clubs, uh, smaller venues and stuff. But is he testing material out for a special? Uh, the animal facts. The animal facts are just, I think, incredible. What drinking beers? This dude's a legend. This is from a website called Deb and Jen's World of Knowledge. Okay? And I want you to think about the people who put this up, okay? They're, you know, not just the fact, but who did it and why they did it. What, why, what were they thinking? Okay. Number one, 
You can lead a cow upstairs, but not down. <laughs> Thanks very much.、Um, I looked into that. It's true. A cow will go upstairs, but they won't go downstairs because the way their joints don't oppose. But I think of the poor bastard who found that out the hard way. <laughs> Come on, Daisy. Down you go. I don't go downstairs. <laughs> Come on! No, I don't go downstairs. My wife's joint. I don't care about your joints. My wife's coming home from work in five fucking minutes. Get down the stairs. He thought, yeah, I've got to tell other people about this. Number two, stroking a spider can cause it to go bald. What? Thanks. Stroking a spider. One. What sort of maniac goes around stroking spiders? <laughs> Dracula's assistant. I don't know. <laughs> Two. Is that a problem in the arachnid world? Premature balding. <laughs> Do they worry about that much? I thought they'd be they'd be loving it, wouldn't they? Being a skinhead, they're so fucking hard. <laughs> Got all the legs, all the eyes, and the teeth. Fuck it, I'm bald. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Adds to it. I like it more. <laughs> <laughs> But no. Apparently it's a big, big problem. You stroke a little spider. <laughs> he says, "Oh, fucking hell!"、Uh. He runs back to the web, and all the other spiders go, "What are you wearing a baseball cap for?" <laughs> Fashion. <laughs> <laughs> bit weird. Nah,、no, it's just fashion. <laughs> take it off in the web. Nah,、no, I just keep, I just keep it on. A、bit cold. Cold. We're in a cupboard under the sink. It's boiling.、Uh, take it off. No, take it off.、Uh, oh. <laughs> Have you been letting a human stroke you? <laughs> Leave this fucking web. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Polar bears. Will sometimes cover their black nose during a hunt to camouflage themselves more completely.、Mm-hmm. It's a good idea, isn't it? Because、uh, apart from the old nose, are perfectly camouflaged. They're white, the snow's white, so they're sneaking up on a little Arctic hare, and they get there, and the Arctic hare he turns round, the polar bear goes. <laughs> But how did they find that out? Because that's behavioural. All the polar bears sitting round one night, going, "I'm starving." Every time I sneak up on a little hare, he looks round and he hops off. It's like he can see me. I can't, I can't work it out. Little voice, little hare goes, "I can tell you. Can you see us? Well, I can see where you are and how many there are of you. Really?" How? You'll kick yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Now go on, tell us. Your nose is black. <laughs> The nose, it's black. Oh. <laughs> 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 Cheers. <laughs> Can you see us now? No. <laughs> Thank you. Ah.、Oh. That is pretty crazy, though. Like how all of us have these primitive instincts and things that are just built into us naturally. <laughs> Same thing for every single animal. My favorite fact. Okay. Number four. Montana mountain goats will sometimes butt heads so hard that their hooves fall off. <laughs> Could、What? that be true? That's amazing.、Mm. So there's two there. They're looking at a female goat. One goes, "I like her." The other goes, "Yeah, I'm probably going to mate with her." Well, no, I saw her first. That's not how it works. How does it work? 
we have to run at each other really hard and crack heads. Is that safe? Oh, yeah. Okay, go. Oh! Ow! Ow! Oh! Look! <laughs> yeah. Yours were right. Yeah. I grip on impact. <laughs> Did you know about this? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell me? Mortal enemies. <laughs> Mortal enemies. Never mind that, my fucking feet are falling off. <laughs> Mortal One enemies. More. Amazing fact. It said Mortal enemies. Elephants have been caught swimming up to two miles off the coast in the Indian Ocean. That's amazing. I didn't know they liked to swim. I certainly didn't think they could swim two miles out to sea. But it's the language this person uses have been caught swimming. <laughs> like it's illegal. <laughs> Says the Coast Guard. Morning. 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 Phone rings. Ring, ring. Hello. They're doing what? <laughs> no, I'll be there. That's me in a little boat. I'm not jacking a bloke off behind me. I'm just... <laughs> uh... <laughs> a lot of jack off blowjobs stories here. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. It's not nothing, is it? <sighs> What's that? Beach ball. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you're doing. Don't look at him. What I'm, I'm to, What are you doing? <sighs> Swimming. <laughs> yeah, you are. Do you know how far off coast you are? <laughs> Two miles. Mm. Is it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know you're not meant to do this, don't you? <sighs> don't cry. <laughs> but if you know you're not meant to do it, I've told you loads of times, why are you doing it again? I forgot. <laughs> Get in the fucking boat. Thanks very much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Size of an elephant's brain. I that was good. I didn't see that setup, but that's what I'm saying. That was a that was a punchline right there. I didn't even see comment. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. That was good. Ladies and gentlemen, executive producer Ricky Gervais, suit CS, but I'm he's just, I don't, this is my first time watching a full special. I think of any comedian, like from start to finish with you guys. Um, no, I take that back. I did Andrew Schultz, but I forgot those videos got pulled down or whatever from fucking YouTube. I'm sure, at some point, YouTube will take these down in two years because it'll go against the guidelines or something. <laughs> I'll make up some shit. Like, I know Ricky Gervais is allowed on this platform. Like, what? Um, yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I heard, uh, Joe Rogan speaking about Ricky Gervais recently. I'm not going to keep this too long. So we've been watching these videos for a long time. I don't want these videos to be too, too long. I was watching, um, Joe Rogan talk about comedians in general. And he mentioned how, you know, certain people get it. Some people don't. And then he mentioned Ricky Gervais, like, and how much of a genius writer he is and how good he is and his delivery. And I can see it. I get hundred percent see it too. Cause you understand it's the same thing with like writing music. You're painting a picture for somebody and he's choosing his words perfectly. And even like his mannerisms, the way that he moves, 
Uh, like even for examples, when he talks about the mouse of the, the, the leaves, that wasn't the funniest part of the story or anything by any means. But he's talking about, but if you took a, took a camera down there and he had a call back to the Discovery Channel and you just went, Whoosh! you would see him going, ah, fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like doing that. And it just, I, I think of like a cartoon mouse, it reminded me of like Ratatouille or something. But like that's the writer's mind right there. Um, yeah, Ricky Gervais is hilarious. This is my first time checking his uh, his content. Well, not his content, but his, his full special. Guys, if you want me to check out more, it's easy. You know, I already know what to do. Just subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. Uh, thank you so much for the paid for donation. This was the largest paid for donation video request I've ever received because of the length of it. And uh, I just want to say thank you. You know, anybody who spends any time with me or spends any of their hard earned dollars, I, I guys, I'll do every video for free. Um, but I know some people are just impatient. They want me to get to what they want me to see right away. So I totally understand. Um, that's what Patreon's for. I don't do them through YouTube. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want me to do any pay for donations, it's over on Patreon. But dude, like I said, I'll do them for fucking free. Just give me some time. I'm one dude. I could put out 15 videos in a day. People are like, hey, you missed these other 3,000, and I'm like, the fuck, I can't win, dude. Oh man, it's hilarious, but I love it, man. This is what I love to do this in my downtime, and uh, I appreciate you for hanging with me. No matter what, go show love to the original artist, Ricky Gervais, uh, on his YouTube channel. Go like, go subscribe. I would love to have you uh, like, subscribe. Anybody here who watched with me going through anxiety, depression, panic attacks, PTSD, addiction, uh, a bad breakup, whatever the case may be, I'm always here for you, man. I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you or amazing artists like Ricky Gervais who allow me to react to their content. Uh, I know that. I'll never forget that. Um, you know, I'm I'm just grateful for anybody who spends a, a second, a millisecond, even if you clicked my video on accident. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, I never plan on having a fucking YouTube channel, man. I did this shit for fun, and then, you know, it just it grew, and I'm, I'm forever grateful. So thank you so much. Um, reach out to me on Instagram if you need me. If you're uncomfortable reaching out to me there, I totally understand. Uh, but that's if you, like, got something going on. Uh, request and stuff, please put them in the comment section. I... It's so hard for me to keep up with requests and stuff on uh, Instagram when I'm trying to help people that are going through a lot of tough shit. Um, also, you can join Discord. It is free. An amazing community. Everyone's got your back there. We got mental health forums. Uh, we got comedians sharing jokes. All types of different stuff in there that you could uh, you know, network and meet people and just bounce ideas off of. It's a great place to hang out. I promise you. Everyone looks out for one another. And like I said, Patreon is where we do the paid for donations. That's where the podcast is going to be hosted at. Uh, that's going to be coming up in like July. Uh, we're still in the middle of finishing, uh, built, well, it's not finishing. We're in the middle of built, uh, building the podcast room and it should be completed by July, which will be, uh, exclusive on Patreon, but I'll still upload parts and clips to YouTube. But I think YouTube will allow me to, cause YouTube is such a stickler. Now look, I caught a little bit of flack because people were like, Oh, you don't need to put, you know, copyright, whatever in front of the video, dude. Because other people didn't. I'm not other people, man. YouTube is not like me. I have been deemed a non-trustworthy content creator for no reason whatsoever. My channel gets sh shut down once a month. I kid you not. I don't know why. I don't know what I did. No, I did not sleep with anybody's wife at YouTube. I don't know what the issue is. But every single month, my channel goes under review or gets disabled or copyright strike to pieces. And I, I, I literally tried to upload the video twice. Twice. And then I put the words over the video and then let me do it. But somebody who has no idea told me, ah, oh, you don't need to put those those words there. Yes, I do. Otherwise, and you understand, it, you don't just upload a video. And poof, it takes hours, especially one this long. This will probably take me eight or nine hours to upload. Versus, you know, a smaller video, which is like five minutes, six minutes long. That could take me like anywhere between five minutes to two hours you just don't know it all depends on youtube and your internet connection and all that shit but anyways i talk too much i love you guys stay safe follow me to the next one let me know what it is and uh, i appreciate you have a wonderful week slash weekend guys